Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a Shimano uh, TLD Triton Lever Drag 25. It was sent in by Michael in Florida. It's got a problem. The uh, free spool release does not progress all the way back to the free spool, so your max drag doesn't uh, tie in at all. And uh, that's usually the result of having the reel apart, having this uh, free spool lever uh, removed and then try to put back in place or something. But we'll square all of that up and we're going to service this reel completely in addition to fixing this issue with the free spool uh, lever on your lever drag reel. We'll talk a little bit about the principles of the uh, lever drag reels. We'll show you how to service this one in particular. And well, if you're working on lever drag reels in general, well, most of the uh, uh, principles apply uh, regardless of the manufacturer. Now I know this reel so I didn't go ahead and do some of the things that I'll recommend now and one of those things is to take uh, the opportunity to go to the internet get the um, schematic for the reel it'll be a blowout or a parts diagram that will show you how the reel is uh, made where the parts belong in terms of orientation and uh, give you a general look into the uh, operation of the reel so that as you're getting ready to service it you can see what to expect as you remove the various parts. Now we just started by removing the handle assembly and we're going to just take this little collar off here and that's all you need to do on that side. This is your main gear, this is a single speed reel and uh, in order to get to the lever drag assembly itself to do the cleaning and the regreasing and that you can see that there's a lot of old salt and the like on the uh, reel. In a quick test it's the lever um, but it's spinning nicely so the ball bearings are in good condition and you just want to to the extent that you can if it's not your reel test it beforehand so that you can identify any potential problems that you need to address uh, during the service. If it is your reel, of course you know how it's been performing and uh, whether it's just a quick tune-up, which you should be doing on an annual basis, or whether it's more involved in terms of replacing a broken part or that. You should be aware of what it is you're trying to solve and have a plan to do that. Well, I just removed the three screws from the track for the lever drag mechanism. Now we're going to take that lever drag off. And while I'm doing that, I want to recommend to you that uh, you subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, please use the notification button to uh, let you know when I'm posting the videos. I post all kinds of videos on reel repair, all kinds of reels. Today it's a salt, salt water tra trolling reel. Tomorrow may be a fresh water bait caster or everything else in between. Okay, we're going to remove the lever and we're going to put all of our pieces and parts into a parts tray. I'm a chaos organization kind of a guy. I use one tray. I use the corners of the tray for various pieces and uh, that seems to suit me well. There's other methods out there. Some folks like to line the pieces and parts off in the order that they were removed. Find a system that suits you and please use a system. The uh, easiest way to get in trouble is to just keep taking parts off lack the organization or the uh, plan for reinstalling and then we get what I call real in the bag projects. I get projects that come in to me because folks that tell me they uh, took the real part and now they can't get it back together again and most of the time it's because they have a part out of sequence or something else. Well at any rate uh, we're going to use my chaos management here. I'm taking the screws off I'm putting them in one corner of that parts tray and I'm going to make sure that all of those screws are the same uh, length. Sometimes Shimano likes to sneak a short screw in there somewhere or a long screw. Sometimes it's this one where it goes through that bracket as well. In this case, uh, so far all of those screws are the same. So a lever drag works by pulling the spool into a drag washer to apply pressure. And as it pulls the spool in, that's your first strike and your second strike until it pulls it all the way in for full contact and that's your full strike. So uh, this one uh, this doesn't have the issue with the pulling in, it has the, the issue with syncing up the release points 
so that it can go into free spool. Well, it looks like there's about six of these on here. I always get a question on these bigger reels. Can I use a mechanical screwdriver? Um, battery operated. And most of the time, I don't recommend it because I've seen damage occur to reels with that. Mostly the damage I see occurs from pushing the screws in, not taking them out. But um, the torque on those things does have a tendency to over torque a reel from time to time. And so I don't recommend it. But again, understanding that some folks don't have the hand strength to do this. Uh, if you want to use it on the way out, you use it at a low speed. If you want to use it on the way in, don't tighten it all the way down. Leave it a little bit proud, maybe a sixteenth of an inch out before it. And then uh, just use your, your hand strength for that last little bit. Well, we've taken all the screws out. That should enable us to remove the side plate now. And you can see it's a fairly uncomplicated reel, which is one of the nice things about a lever drag reel. It just aren't that many moving parts, but the parts have to be in the right position and they have to be done uh, and assembled correctly in order to make it work properly. As I mentioned, this is a one speed reel. So we're going to pull the main gear out. There's an anti-reverse dog right behind here. This is a good place to tie you to take pictures. As you're uh, working on that reel, this one's going to be the the anti-reverse. And if you when you remove that main gear out, it's going to fall to the other side because of the spring. So you need to know the orientation of that as you go to work on the reel. We're going to push the main gear through. That's your anti-reverse dog now. It's fallen in. And most of the time you're going to clean it, but well, this one just doesn't need a lot of cleaning. If anything, what, what could be said about this reel is it's very dry. Well, we spun the bearings before and they were working fine. So I'm going to tell you just to oil that bearing. Put an oil drop onto that anti-reverse dog. And here's how your anti-reverse dog is going to work. It's going to hit the ridges on the back of the main gear and then it's going to seat itself in one of these notches to stop the, the main gear from backpedaling. Well, this reel, as I mentioned, seems to be totally devoid of crease. You want to check all the teeth, make sure that they're uniform, that they're uh, nice and crisp. Check it this way with the points, check it this way for the orientation side to side, making sure all those uh, grooves are parallel. Then we want to put a good amount of grease onto this. We're going to use fishing reel grease. I'm using pen precision reel grease. And uh, I don't have a preference for the fishing reel greases, but I do have a preference that you use fishing reel grease when you do that. We've done that. We'll just put a little bit onto the main shaft. We're going to reinstall now. Remember, this is not going to allow you to seat the, the main gear all the way. So what we're going to do is put the main gear in. We're going to grab our awl and we're going to pull on the bottom end of that dog so that it can seat all the way in. When you do that now, you can actually go ahead and put that collar on. That sometimes will help hold that gear from tripping out while you go to service other things. So I'm holding pressure on the back of the gear so I can try and install this piece. Not having a lot of luck there, it's kind of going on crossed. That's also why it's going to hold it too, I guess, right? All right, for now, we should be okay with that. And just turn it and make sure that it's operating properly. I think what happened with that, I just knocked this out. I did. There we go. All right, and turn it, make sure that you have a nice turning gear. And I just pushed it out again. So I guess everybody's getting a lesson in how to set that dog. We're just going to set that off to the side. That doesn't need to go on my parts tray. It's a big enough piece to begin with. Next up, we're going to take out our assembly. And the first thing I want to do is I want to address this. I want to get that um, old salt and the like off. I have a product. I'm going to shut my uh, video down here. I'm going to use Flitz Pre-Clean. It's a metal cleaner, and it should dissolve all of the salt, salt or at least a good portion of it. So I'll be right back. I mentioned the product. The product is Flitz Metal Pre-Clean and with just a couple of squirts of it and a rinse off, almost all of that uh, salting in the lake is gone. Notice on this that it tells you that the 
way to take this plate off, which has got the grooves on it, is to unscrew in a clockwise manner. Here's your grooves. So you just want to grab this, and hand pressure should enable you to take that off. Speaking of taking it off, we should be able to take off that pinion gear as well. And spin this, and this is going to give us the inside of your reel. You have the container, you have the pressure plate, and then you have a series of burrings and springs in here and the drag washer. This drag washer is in good condition. This whole reel seems to be in pretty darn good condition, except that the, um, the lever drag was uh, uh, not engaging properly. Okay, take a picture here. If you have any dirt or debris on your pressure plate, make sure you remove it. You're going to have a bearing, a spring, and then there's an, a second bearing underneath there. I like to put those springs right into my tray, and uh, we'll come over to the other side now where we move the, the back end of this. There's a pin here, and it tends to want to fall out. It's, it's a very lightly uh, seated pin, so make sure you know where that pin is, otherwise when you go to install, well, <laughs> you won't have the pin, and your reel will spin uh, as a result. That pin seats in the back here in that slot. There's two screws that are holding the balance of this on then. Put that bearing back in there. And it looks like the manufacturer has used that cool Loctite, the blue, to hold these screws in. I don't Loctite the screws. I've seen a lot of these come in and break off. So I don't, uh, don't generally recommend that, but if the manufacturer uses it, that's on them. This is the cap that holds the rest of the assembly in. And now we should be able to remove the whole axle shaft. There's a big bearing on the back there. There's a small bearing here. You can actually take the axle shaft and push that bearing up to get it out from that side. So those are the two bearings that belong on the top end. Take a picture again. You want to make sure it's clean, but again, this reel, well, this reel is very clean. Just take any debris that might be out of there. Same on this side. And then here's your anatomy of the, the downside of this. There's a little uh, clip here on the axle shaft. There's a big bearing. There's a couple of tension washers. They're not flat. They are wavy. And then there's the back end of this. You don't need to do anything with this other than, well, we've inspected the bearings already. They're running fine. Just oil them. You can put a little bit of grease onto the axle shaft if you want. But for the most part, this is pretty hollow inside here. There's not going to be friction on that. Then what you want to do simply is take it and reverse your process. Place the assembly inside, find your plate, and go for those two flathead screws to close up that assembly. So while I'm doing this, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you want to know a little bit more about the reel, maybe you want to know more about the manufacturer, maybe you're working on a reel and, well, something isn't going according to plan and you're a little stuck, maybe you're watching this video because you can't figure out something and I didn't explain it very well, uh, just leave the question in the comment section, I'll try to help you. And uh, the whole idea behind Second Chance is to teach you how to do it yourself and to keep your reels running. So. If you don't be uh, ashamed or whatever to uh, to go ahead and ask those questions. We have the two small bearings that go on this side. Gonna, now they're shielded; they're not sealed, so I'm going to flood them with oil. I don't uh, I don't use greases on the bearings. I use oil. Push it down, make sure that that is in the cavity. The second one goes on next. Then our pressure, pressure plate goes on. And then, because we were unscrewing that in a clockwise manner, we're going to screw it on in a counterclockwise manner. I don't uh, grease that um, drag washer. The drag washer didn't come from the factory greased, so I leave it as it is. All right, so back to that pin. 
That pin is a loosely hanging pin. So what you want to do is you want to put that pin into the hole in the shaft and you want to separate it in half on each side. Then you've got the slot here in the case. So kind of line it up and turn it until it seats flush with the rim on the outside. Now this reel's got UV damage on it. There's nothing you can really do about the UV damage, but the good news is, is it does not affect performance. Okay, next up then we're going to put the, well in this case we want to clean up. There is a little bit of residual grease left over in this pinion gear here, so I'm just going to use a light brush to pull it out. I, I use a paper towel so that the the old dirt and grease goes off to the side and not onto the bench. It looks like there's a little bit of scarring on these teeth. Alright, if it's a little noisy we're going to figure out why. And then we'll just, again, a good helping of grease onto the pinion gear. Seat the pinion gear into your spool assembly. And now the next piece to do is to mesh your main assembly with the carriage or the frame. Just like that. Now there's springs in there. You remember you saw that spring. That spring is actually getting compressed there. Right now I just want to test this because this came loose and may have come loose as I was putting it in. So I want to go back and check that. There's a chance that the gear that I was putting it in kind of skipped out. So before I go button the whole thing up to find out that it's not turning, I want to go ahead and just re reset that. Yeah, it came came loose. So just be careful when you're doing this dog. And we'll show you the other way to do it now that we're mounting it in. Just pull the dog back. Pull that across. And for this purposes now, we're going to put the handle on. That way we will assure that we're holding that main gear tight. It's a little awkward, but the benefit is that you don't skip out and do this two or three more times trying to get the right sense to it. And I'll just finger tighten it for now. Okay, now I know I've got it right. Let's go ahead and put this back in again. And let's go back to putting those screws in. Again, if you're going to use a mechanical screwdriver at this point, take it about three quarters of the way down, but do not finish the screw with the mechanical screwdriver. And this is what I mean by proud. Leave it about here with the mechanical screwdriver, and then just finish the turns. It's only two or three turns. Finish that by hand so that you don't risk over torquing the case. And what I like to do is I kind of like to go near and far when I put these case screws in. So I don't put them in in a circular manner. I kind of go triangular. In this case, we got six. So I'll do that one. Then I'm going to come over to this side where I don't have one. And then I'll fill in blanks. That keeps the tension on the side plate even. And that makes a little difference when you go to tighten them up. As I mentioned, I've seen cracked cases, I've seen reels that are binding and other things because folks just uh, either were using those mechanical screwdrivers or they were out of sequence in the tightening of the screws and the like. It's sort of like, oh, I guess I learned this a long time ago working on a car engine. 
when you go to torque down the bolts on a on a uh, engine assembly like a valve head or something um, you don't just go in a circle you kind of go in alternate patterns to, to keep the pressure the same same idea here with the fishing wheels all right two more and then we'll go attach the lever and we'll see if it's made a difference I'm um, pretty sure from what I saw on the inside, there was no mechanical reason why the lever would stop midstream. So to me, what's happened is the lever was probably removed at some point. When it went back on, it uh, was put in in the wrong position. And well, that never ends well. All right, last of the big pieces. And we'll go assemble that lever piece. Again, you can work around the handle. Next one up was that washer that goes behind the drag assembly. So here's your ramp. You have two kind of pyramid structures on your adjuster, preset adjuster. And in the reel here, there's a corresponding two indents. So when we go to set this up, we want to set this up in a free spool position with the indents in what I'll call the neutral or the deep slot. Before we do that, I kind of have to set the ring in. So we'll do that next. It's only one, one way that ring can go on because of those uh, adjuster buttons there for the release for the max drag and the like. I like to put one on kind, kind of sort of tight and then I want to install this. There's a little lip on the back here. You want to make sure that you get that over the swing. And then bring that on to your preset adjuster before you continue. The flat screw without the bump guard is the one that goes in the middle. And then we got one more over on the side here. Well, that's all the parts except for the tie down screw and uh, the adjuster. And that's another advantage of using the tray. When the tray is empty, you know, you've got mission accomplished. You've put all the parts back on. Hopefully you've put it back on in the right way. But uh, if you see anything left over in the bin that shouldn't be left over, well, this is your chance to go back and make that right. Okay, the stops are in place. So now what we want to do is we want to bring this to the, the neutral position, the free spool position. Sometimes you have to hold that down because of the cut. You see the two indents here in the lever. Now we want to align the two indents in the lever with the uh, ramp. And then we can put our adjuster button on. And with any luck right now, we should have a free spool. We do. And well, we haven't tightened this up much, but let's give it a try here. Let's move this to like the first strike over to the second. We don't have this tightened very much. As soon as you see the handle moving, you know that you have your lever correct. This should back off all the way now. Free spool. And that's where you want to make your adjustments so that uh, it fits the fish that you are fighting. So let's turn this one or two turns. And when I bring it up to the first strike now, let's see if the handle is turning. Not yet. I'm going to back it off again. I'll do another maybe half a turn. Bring it back up. Now I have the handle turning on first strike. So you can make a play here as to whether that's too much or too little, and then uh, judge accordingly. And then we'll go all the way over to max drag. And yeah, I get a little noise there. That's the, the little scarring I saw on that pinion gear, but that's kind of the way that works. And then we'll bring it all the way back. So my guess on this one 
what happened with the reel was that this became removed. When it became removed, uh, the ramp wasn't set the right way against the lever, and when it fell back into the neutral position, it was somewhere over there. And, uh, well, that's not going to allow you to fish the reel in that position. All right, we left this one hand tightened, so let's tighten this and align the scallop so that we can get that tie down screw in. And that's the only piece that's in my parts tray, so that must mean we're getting close to the end of the video. Well, that having been said, I want to take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel for everything that you've been doing to keep us safe. I really do appreciate your hard work and efforts. Well, it's always the little screws that get me. We'll set that one down and we'll do a final test. So we pretty much have it set up now. We're in free spool. Spins beautifully. That means the bearings and everything are very nice. You go to first strike. You've got pressure on that. Not total pressure, but you've got pressure. And then all the way over to the max drag. And now you've got a max drag there. That's the way I would set it for my usage. But again, there's flexibility in that depending on the fish you're fighting and uh, your preferences. So you can use that accordingly. Well, as I mentioned, we got some sun damage on this. You can't do much with that. There is a polish. It's a rod and reel cleaner. This one's by Pen. It will kind of pretty it up a little bit, but there's, you're done with the, uh, the sun damage, which is expected on uh, boats, particularly out on the ocean. Uh, well, there's really no remedy for it. It's sort of like those um, uh, headlight uh, cleaners that you see that uh, get murky. Uh, you can fix it for a while, but then you generally have to go back and reapply. It's the same here. All right, well, that's it. That's your Shimano TLD 25. It's a lever drag fishing reel, the Triton lever drag. This one is in nice condition. It's ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I wish everybody great days on the water. Have a fantastic time fishing uh, and enjoy your day. This is Dennis for Second Chance Tackle.